Hey everyone, welcome back to the Half Soybean channel. My name is Sharon, and as you would have seen from the title of this video, today we are recreating the dress from Barbie as the Nutcracker. I am so excited because this is one of the first Barbie movies I ever watched and owned. I think it's the first one they actually made ever. And I remember when I was, I don't know, somewhere between the ages of five to seven, my dad bought me the VCR version of this movie. And I remember re-watching it over and over again, probably hundreds of times. I was absolutely obsessed with Clara's dress, especially in the final dance sequence. I thought it was so beautiful and also her heart locket necklace and that's why I was so excited to find a very similar necklace by Ana Luisa it's called the heart puff necklace and I also have the matching earrings which makes it double the fun I love Ana Luisa jewelry and right now they are having 20% off their entire website for the month of July with so many cute pieces available definitely go check it out and if you do love heart themed jewelry like I do this isn't the only ones they have they have a huge range of cute heart themed jewelry it has cute gems some of them have locket features lots of cute little designs but don't wait too long because all their jewelry is made in limited batches to ensure that they are really great quality and also to minimize waste this cute jewelry doesn't mean you have to break the bank because they are also really really affordable with prices starting at only 39 dollars and they say no to luxury markups and make sure you get the best quality for the best price i have actually worn this ring on my second finger every day for the last two months actually and it's held up amazingly and it's safe to say that it has not turned my finger green like some lesser quality alternatives out there the best part is Ana Luisa says no to traditional gold mining which is super harmful for the workers and also the environment and they recycle all of their gold from old jewelry or recycled computer parts. They're also extremely conscious of any carbon emissions they might be making as a business, and that is why they are 100% carbon neutral, and they offset all of their carbon emissions from the sourcing of their raw materials all the way to how they dispose of their waste. I've included a link in my description box, and also I've pinned it in the comments. So if you are interested in looking, please go through my link because that'll let Anna Luisa know that I sent you, and they are having 20% off their entire website right now and thank you so much to Ana Luisa for sending me my dream necklace and earring set. Alright I'm gonna show you the innermost layer of the dress I think which is gonna be just this like polyester kind of lining and I haven't worked out the exact inside layers but I've got several different colors of pink tulle so I've got this glittery one really big glitter I wish they had like a smaller grain glitter tulle but I really couldn't find that anywhere and I've got this very stiff kind of tulle I think it's called uh, I don't know what it is I think it's I don't know what it's called <laughs> and then I have this magenta like stretch tulle I mean I didn't expect it to be this dark colored because I bought this particular tool online and the photo didn't look as dark. And then I also have this glass organza which I'm going to put as the very top layer and that um, movement, that shimmeriness I think is what's really going to well replicate Barbie's original dress. And then for the bodice I picked up this pink sequined fabric and hopefully that looks decent and I will also have to figure out a lining for the bodice but that can come later. My friend's actually having a costume party for his birthday and it was like childhood movies and TV show themed and of course this was my favorite Barbie movie going growing up. Honestly even if I rewatch the clip now it just it's so beautiful I don't understand like I just don't understand it looks so good and I don't think it actually can be recreated in like a real life way because it's just this like translucence going on and I don't know I just don't think that's possible in real life. Ideally I really want to be cutting circle skirts out of all my fabrics but I think the width of the roll simply does not allow me to do that so for the majority of the inside layers I'm going to just gather and hopefully it becomes poofy enough I am concerned that it's not going to have that flare that circle skirts give but hopefully I can achieve that for the outermost 
layer. I'm going to start by actually cutting this in half. With whatever fabric I had, I cut all of them lengthways so that I had extra fabric to work with. And then whatever was the half of the width became my skirt length. I think that's a little bit confusing, but they were all different lengths of skirt but most of them cut at knee length or calf length. Width wise, I was working with between three to four meters as I had combined the two pieces I cut lengthways and all of that was gathered to fit my waist circumference. I'm gonna start with the skirt and just pin it onto Miss Mannequin behind me over there and then see how we go. And then I will start working on the bodice part. I initially thought that I'd need two lining skirts to sandwich the scratchy stiff netting tool, but I didn't have enough width to work with and had to attach them together to form a single lining under the netting. And you can see that when I gather about 150 centimeters of width, it's too narrow at the bottom. And so I had to combine two of them, so it became three meters, and then I gathered it. I was really on Struggle Street cutting the tool, but I did get there in the end. I gathered all of my tool, which would each form a single layer of the skirt. I had a total of four underskirts, and then the one final organza layer, which I also ended up gathering instead of doing a circle skirt. I gathered about four meters of organza. I cut a piece of bias tape and you can see that ribbon looking thing, the yellow. Um, <laughs> it's yellow because it's the only color I had, but so that's cut to match my waist circumference. And so I gathered everything to fit that length as there were so many layers going on and it was getting a bit confusing. You can see me laying down two separate pieces of tool for some layers, but I did end up sewing them together later on. I clipped them all together so it became one giant skirt and then I basted it so I would be able to cover that frilly edge with bias tape later on. There we go. That's what the skirt looks like so far. It's really, really full and it's very poofy. I'm actually very concerned how we're gonna attach it to the bodice but that's what we're gonna figure out next i think for the corset part of it the bodice i am going to kind of follow the shape of the corset i made like a really really long time ago it was like the reversible corset video but we do have to change a few things and that is we don't want straps on these and we also want to lengthen the bodice the original barbie corset is actually quite long but i actually don't want mine to be as long because i think while it is beautiful in its own merit i think it will very much shorten uh how i look like it's gonna make my legs look really short yeah i'm gonna see what i can draft up and Let's go from there. So I drafted up something very, very basic. And as I refine it, hopefully I can leave like uh, at least my template, even if I can't grade it by size. I'll try to at least leave my size as like a PDF in the description box, but I'm just gonna try sew up this draft and then work from there. It's actually quite a bit too long at the moment, but hopefully once I sew it together, it'll become more obvious what needs to be changed. I don't know how I feel about this. I'm actually just, I'm just kind of stressed about this right now. Like it's just a big task. <laughs> and also like the skirt's so poofy. I don't, I'm not sure how the corset's gonna fit over the top of that either. We'll see how we go. Just stick through it and it usually works out. I did like a few versions and then I transferred my final version onto paper 
as you can see some panels um, I had multiple pieces that I combined and then cut and then I don't know in the end I just combined a lot of my pieces together and the one thing I would change about my pattern is to make the front bottom edge a little bit pointier because mine's a little bit too rounded unlike Barbie's dress. I cut out the pattern in my sequined fabric and thought that I was done, but then I realized I didn't cut out one pattern in my paper, so um, I had to go back and cut that out. Then I finally had all of my pieces. I cut out the exact same shapes in some spare poplin I had lying around at home. Then I sewed up my bodice, just adding the pieces together. What you need to do is match up the fabrics right sides together and just sew that down. I ended up breaking two needles sewing through this fabric, but I was able to make it through in the end. Then I repeated the steps with my bodice lining. I also went back to work on the skirt and covered all those frilly gathered edges in my bias tape. How does one attach multiple skirt layers to a single bodice usually? Please point me to any useful resources. Okay, and then I went back to the bodice. I made a frilly trim to add to the bodice neckline and all I did was get a long strip of organza folded in half and gathered one side, which was the raw edge. Then you should end up with this curly, frilly, organza ribbon thing. Laying out my bodice lining right side up, I wedged the frilly trim in between the lining and the sequin side. The part you want to poke up in the final bodice should point towards the bottom edge of the bodice when you're laying it down and then put the sequin side facing right side of the lining and sew the trim down in the middle. And here is an update on how my bodice was looking. Next, I put in my boning channels and for the boning, I simply just used the leftover zip ties I had from my reversible corset project and I put two channels on the front two seams, but I put one channel in the rest of the seams, mostly because I was running out of zip ties, but I imagine doing more would make it sturdier. I slid the zip ties into the channels and also cut them to the appropriate length and when you're cutting they should be quite a bit shorter than the actual length of the channel because you don't want them to be accidentally too long for when you attach the skirt later. Once I did that I sealed the bottom edge as well as the sides with my overlocker but I have since learned that apparently running sequined fabric through the overlocker is a terrible idea. I just folded the sides down to create one last set of boning channels and that's the very back part and I figured we'd need some support for the back as well. That's why I went back to do that. And then it looked pretty sturdy. I basted the skirt which is still open at the back by the way so it's just one huge gathered rectangular piece and you can see that black thread peeping through. I used that to baste them together and I connected that with the waist edge of the bottom of the bodice that I had just done. To make it all more sturdy I ran it through the machine. I also added an invisible zip just to the skirt section part since the bodice would become a lace-up corset later on. And my question is, are there any good resources on attaching zips huge multi-layered skirts like this? Because I'm not even going to share how I did mine because I'm embarrassed um, by my made-up techniques. Although it didn't look too bad in the end. 
I was wrestling with the skirt <laughs> and I did manage to get the invisible zip on there but honestly it's a very dodgy job please I am not the person to teach you how to do zippers so I'm sure there's plenty of other awesome resources out there but I am going to close up the bottom of the dress because the back of it's still open like under the zipper and I also still need to hem the skirt and I think that will finish off the bottom half of the dress. I also added this hook thing to the top of the skirt zipper just so that it doesn't accidentally undo when I am wearing it. And this is where we are at. With the organza skirt hem, I overlocked it and then did a rolled hem with my sewing machine. The tool layers don't need to be hemmed as they don't fray and the polyester lining, I actually made the selvage of the fabric as the bottom edge so I wouldn't have to hem it. And I'm just so lazy like that. All right. Now for the grommets to go onto the bodice. These are also left over from my reversible corset video. I initially marked about one inch intervals down the bodice back, but then when I did come to put them in, I think I did like two inch intervals because, because I don't know, it just seemed to make more sense when I was doing it. Also, I didn't have a hammer, so I'm literally using a wrench and I'm so sorry, it's just focusing on my head. Then I was just doing the most because I dyed some white ribbon I had from my Bridgerton wedding dress video because I didn't want to lace up my corset with a white ribbon. So I quickly dyed it pink with some Ritz dye and it actually turned out a really pretty color. And finally, I had to make those frilly armband things. They're not actually attached to the dress by the way and they just sit on my arms. So I tried two ways and in the first way I pre-made a loop and tried to zigzag stitch an elastic in the center but it really wasn't working how I wanted because I don't think I was pulling the elastic evenly. So I ended up making a new one and this time I put a channel in the center and I just fed the elastic through there. It's basically a large rectangle folded in half and then made circular, kind of like making a scrunchie. Anyway, I was happy with my second method. And that finished my Barbie as a nutcracker dress. And here is the final look. So Sydney's in lockdown right now, so I couldn't go outside to film. And it would have been really nice to go outside for this, I think. But here are some shots of the dress. And this dress is really my childhood dream come true. And I'm super happy with it. Also, just a reminder that Ana Luisa is having 20% all their jewelry during July. And thanks so much for watching. And I will see you very soon in the next video. Oh. Turning in me on, yeah, you do. I like the way it feels to be.